What makes it imperative for Nigeria to return to agriculture as a major revenue contributor? Quite a number of things. For one, agriculture was the mainstay of the nation's economy before the discovery of oil. It accounted for a significant percentage of foreign exchange earnings, employing more than 70% of the country's workforce. With just a little more effort, we can recapture those days again and change the narrative of an import-dependent nation to a food-exporting country. In attaining these goals and more, the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development is the driving force as it initiates, drives, monitors and oversees government policy initiatives and implementation. That's why this program has been designed to capture the activities of the Ministry as it carries out this mandate. Welcome to the maiden edition of Transforming Agriculture in Nigeria. I am Ibrahim Yusuf. Join me after this break as I unfold our agenda. Stay with us. Transforming Agriculture in Nigeria is a new series highlighting the absolute necessity for Nigeria to embrace agriculture, the gains we stand to make, the successes government has recorded so far, and the role of the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development in all of these. We shall start the program with a new segment where we take highlights from some events involving the Ministry. In this episode, we will catch up on some events involving the Minister in the recent past, especially during the peak of the COVID-19 pandemic. Please stay tuned. In its bid to support government's efforts to ease the effect of the COVID-19 pandemic on Nigerians, the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development has facilitated the release of 70,000 metric tons of assorted grains to Nigerians across the country. The grains including maize, millet, sorghum and other commodities like gari were released from the Ministry's strategic grains reserves in several parts of the country and handed over to the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs for onward distribution by the National Emergency Management Authority, NEMA. It included 5,000 metric tons of maize as feeds to poultry farmers in the country. At the strategic grains reserves in Guso, Lafia, Dusama and Yola, the silos managers reiterated the Ministry's readiness to respond swiftly during emergencies. You have two types of food commodity in this site. One is sorghum, the other one is maize. So far, for sorghum, we've released 13,987.91 metric tons, getting adequate support from our headquarters. They've been giving us the necessary logistics that will make this job go smoothly. From my headquarters, the director said we should release 12,500 metric tons of maize and 4,000 metric tons of sugar to the public. So far, so good. The, this silo, I mean, the last silo, has released maize 9,945.34 metric tons. It will village to 21,930 bucks. Equally, we have released sugar of 119. 0.32 metric tons of sorghum, equivalent to 71,500 metric tons to the public. The items were bagged and loaded onto trucks for onward distribution to the states under the supervision of NEMA. When the vehicles are loaded, the weigher. After weighing, we invite the Nigeria police who do the escort of the items to the various uh, states. In a similar 
Ola Vane, the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development has distributed agricultural inputs to smallholder farmers in the six geopolitical zones of the country. This is in a bid to cushion the effect of the COVID-19 pandemic and enable them to start off the next farming season smoothly. The inputs included improved seeds comprising rice, maize, wheat, sorghum and cowpeas, among others. Speaking during the flag off of the distribution in June, Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development Mohamed Sabo Nanuno said the move became necessary to support smallholder farmers who may not have such seeds to plant due to the negative impact of the pandemic. The restriction of movement on people, goods and services has negatively impacted on food supply chains, incomes and livelihoods in the country. Since the smallholder are the most vulnerable, it becomes imperative for government to support them with much needed input, especially seeds, which is the most important factor that influences farmers' yield in order to enable them to recover quickly from the effect of pandemic. The ministry distributed 570 metric tons of rice seedlings of various varieties to rice farmers through the Rise Farmers Association of Nigeria, REFAN, while restating its commitment to improved seedlings by working with research institutions for greater yield and productivity. Development, Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Mohamed Sabu Nanunu, has urged stakeholders to show political will in the country's bid to revitalize its research institutions crucial to the development of the agricultural sector in Nigeria. Nanunu was speaking during a public hearing on the Agricultural Research Council of Nigeria ARCN Act Amendment Bill organized by the Senate Committee on Agriculture and rural development. The minister noted that the importance of research to agriculture should never be downplayed. Take NAFRI. NAFRI was established in 1922. Take Vaughan in Jos. was established around 1958 or thereabout. And it's a referral center for, the, for, the, for, this, for the Central African countries as well as for the West African sub region. Very, very important research institute. But what are their conditions today? So uh, this attitude has to be, this issue has to be taken and we must have the political will to understand what research means or, or, and why we need this research. You can't move forward, especially in the agricultural sector without research. The amendment bill which was sponsored by the Chairman Senate Committee on Agriculture and rural development, Senator Abdullahi Adamu seeks to transform the Agricultural Research Council of Nigeria to a parent research organization with the several agricultural research institutions under it, among other reforms. You're watching Transforming Agriculture in Nigeria. The ever-changing nature of agriculture has ensured that every day there is something new to learn, something that can make the difference between poor yield and a bumper harvest. That is why it's very important that countries have excellent extension services. In our next segment of the program, which x-rays policies of government, we shall be looking at this critical component of agriculture and what government is doing to ensure that extension services takes its place in the overall scheme of turning Nigeria into a giant in agriculture. We will try to avoid any chemical form of fertilizer or anything. So from this day forth, we here, that is what we take our I hope you are following the normal procedure of feeding. We have been fascinated seeing the things moving.
An extension worker checking on the progress of farmers in the Anguarimi area of Kaduna State. Here, farmers have been taught to thin their amaranthus farm by transplanting using proper spacing techniques as against the broadcasting method they initially adopted. The results of a previous exercise using good farm practices are encouraging. When you apply fertilizer, after we weed, after hand picking, you either hand pick or you weed. Uh -huh, then you apply your. Elsewhere, this extension officer with the Federal Capital Territory Agricultural Development Project is engaging local farmers on best practices for nutritional crops. The way we farm our farm is not like this. The way we farm our farm, the harvest we harvest, we farm a larger farm. But at the end of the, the harvest, we we'll get little quantity. But the way they teach us, we learn it, we are very happy about it. Like this, uh, and for we don't even know how they are farming it like this. We farm it anyhow. So with this, we are very happy. First of all, they taught us about nutrition before they introduced us to the farm to know how to get our, our source of uh, the nutrition. From, the, from our various farm. So this is the demo plot. Initially, from the beginning, we prepared this, this very place. We did the preparation of the, the land. Then we start cultivating. And after cultivating, we start according to the direction. The techniques that I've learned here, like this, the spaces of being farming, this thing. We don't know about the spaces, we farm it anyhow. But now we, I, can, I know the spaces of farming either the um, soya beans, all the cow peas, whether the ogu, all this, we have known the spaces. Grace and Fidelia are two of the women who are benefiting from this agricultural extension exercise. They have learned that crop spaces, ridge patterns, and maximizing small spaces are very important to their farming. To use our poultry droppings or our cow dunks. Eh? So. This demonstration farm at Ongwambasa in the Guagolada Area Council was created by the FCT Agricultural Development Project ADP in collaboration with Japan International Cooperation Agency, JICA, to teach women and nursing mothers how to grow certain nutritional crops like okra, amaranthus, soybeans, pumpkin, cowpea, and jute, among others, to boost nutrition and livelihood in their homes. As you can see, our spacing is uh, precision space, and I can see. It's because why this is done, you know, some will just open, say, two or three hectares or one hectare. At the end, you will not see, the yield will not be this thing. It's not encouraging. This is where we teach them the correct spacing, where they will get bumper harvest in a very small area. These farmers are expected to replicate the new knowledge and techniques in their individual farms and pass the knowledge to other members of their communities. Whether it's the FCT or other parts of the country, the Agricultural Development Project's ADPs are a crucial vehicle with which the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development reaches out to farmers through extension services. We are collaborating with all the state ADP ag agricultural development programs in all the states of the Federation. And as you can see, we came here to go around the demonstration farms by uh, being managed by our uh, FCT ADP. Research institutions where new innovations in agriculture are introduced form an important part of the process. 
if there are innovations too, you know, farmers may not have access to those innovations. We go, there is what we call monthly training. We have the extension agents. Extension agents with the subject matter specialists. If the, if the innovation is on last talk, the, uh, the subject matter specialist last talk will go to the zone, deliver the innovation to the extension agent, which will in turn take it to farmers. Mm -hmm. The Ministry of Agriculture understands the importance of extension services to agriculture and is making it a crucial part of its objectives. Knowledge, that was the extension work gives to the farmer. And knowledge is wealth and knowledge is power. It doesn't matter, you can give them all the inputs that they need. But if they don't have the knowledge to apply this fertilizer, then there is a problem. The extension agents goes to the grassroots and uh, meet the farmers, even at the ward level in local governments, conveying to them the new technology, uh, technology uh, available um, and the agrochemicals, farm inputs that can better off the yield of their crop per hectare. For example, if you take the issue of uh, red beans, which is being produced in the northeastern part of the country in abundance and which is, has the potential for export. For about three years now, we have been banned from exporting red beans. Not because it is not of good quality, but the chemical content it, it is so high. So it is not going to be consumed in the European Union countries. And these are our largest importers of red beans. Just I'm giving you one example. So the issue of extension service also teaches a farmer when to plant, where to plant, the type of fertilizer that you are going to use, the spacing of even the planting. Very, very critical. Beyond imparting knowledge and improved farming skills to the farmer, the extension worker acts as a link between the farmer and the agri-research institutions, taking the challenges of farmers to where they can be analyzed for possible solutions. In a nation where over 100 million people are engaged in farming, Providing extension services will not only revolutionize farming methods and yield, it will no doubt create job opportunities, especially since the global standard for extension services is one extension worker to 800 farmers. The situation at present is at an average of just one extension worker to about 18,000 farmers. The ministry is working to correct that index. So what the ministry is doing actually is uh, to revitalize the National Agricultural Extension Services and we are coming up with a National Agricultural Extension Policy uh, that is almost ready. Uh, the minister set up a committee uh, to actually review uh, and see how we can revitalize agricultural extension uh, in, in the country and we have gone very far. So we will work with state governments that are key to the success of uh, extension services. As of today, we have fairly well trained 35,000 extension workers from 16,000 extension workers that we used to have in those days. Because uh, people are not taking this matter of extension service very seriously, but I take it very, very seriously. The Honorable Minister has uh, directed that at least for the next four years, we should train minimum of 75,000 extension workers. Um, we have done several uh, activities so far as a foundation to achieve that. Though we have a little setback, which uh, we are working towards it. The inability of government to sustain such plan means the private sector must get involved. Extension services can change the story of agriculture in Nigeria. The advantages are numerous, from increasing yield, minimizing waste, reducing chemical content, maximizing space, and a whole lot more.
The plan to train 75,000 extension workers annually is therefore timely as the country looks to take full advantage of its around 90 million hectares of arable land and boost the contribution of agriculture to her GDP. Moving on, the program has a segment which we captioned Farmers Speak. It is a window for farmers across the country to speak their minds on government policies, initiatives and even their experience. Farmers Speak is up next. If you look at this my rice now, it's passed for hectares. By the time when we use the plow, harrowing, when time of land preparation, so by the time when we are using manual, we used to use hand to plant by ourselves. When they like a 10, 20 people, when they cannot plant an acre in a day. But by the time when you are using mechanization, so even you can plant an hectares. is a tiny seed that grows in pods on the sesamum indicum plant. It is rich in oil, often appearing as an off-white seed wrapped in an edible husk. Also called benny seed in many parts of the world, sesame seed is a popular global commodity for its health benefits, especially as a healthy vegetable oil. In fact, it is the most demanded vegetable oil in the world due to the absence of cholesterol. About 5 million tons of sesame seeds are produced globally every year, with Myanmar claiming the number one spot as the world's largest producer. It is an expensive commodity that sells for between $1,500 and $2,500 per ton depending on the quality. Nigeria is the sixth largest producer of sesame seeds in the world and second largest in Africa, just behind Sudan, with an estimated 460,000 metric tons produced in 2019. That accounted for more than 7.5% of global production. As for global market share, the country was responsible for 17% of global exports in 2019. Sesame seed is the most sought-after agricultural export in Nigeria, raking in $356.2 million in 2019. Due to its ability to survive droughts, it is grown in many parts of northern Nigeria, including Benue, Sokwato, Jagawa, Nasarawa, Katsina, Kano, Yobe, and Plato, among others. Cultivation of sesame seeds also thrives in the southern parts of Nigeria, in states like Eboyi, Cross River and Delta. It is called Riti by the Hausa, Ekuku by the Igbos and Isasa by the Yoruba. This is where we end this episode of the program Transforming Agriculture in Nigeria. The federal government, through the agricultural sector, has a target of creating 5 million jobs and injecting $10 billion into the economy within the next 10 years. And given the zeal with which it is pursuing this target, it is not only possible, but also surpassable. So join me same time next week for more on the actions and activities of the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development. Ibrahim Yusuf is my name. See you again next week.